TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live, finally. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, if we do go live and you happen to miss it, just go to twitch.com. They save all the lives. You can scroll through them all. I'll start titling them better so you can see what's in them. You can do it that way. Don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday. And that's stuff we do not watch. We can't watch on YouTube. And we also got merch. The link to all of that is down below in the description, man. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 4, Episode 7. Let's get into it. About to say. A recent government report reveals the total number of traveller caravans in England has increased by 30% in the last decade. For some councils, the cost of evicting travellers has nearly doubled over the last four years. Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are High Court Enforcement I'm not gonna lie, man. I, I bet you when they see these, like, traveler estates come up on their, um, come up on their paperwork, I bet you they heart drink, like, drop a little bit. They gotta be some type of intimidated by them, just a little bit. Even if they don't show it, they gotta be like, ah, oh, my God. Not today. <laughs> like, I know it. Agents. They travel hundreds of miles each week, collecting debts and repossessing property. Today, they're in Birmingham to carry out an eviction. But this job isn't going to be straightforward. We're about to repossess part of a car park which has been settled on by, allegedly, 28 travellers' caravans. The travellers were moved from the same site more than a year ago. But recently, the community returned. Police will be in attendance. We hope we don't need them. It's not going to be uh, an easy ride. When you go to a traveller's site, you really don't know the reaction you're getting at. It could be volatile. So you have to be very careful. Because of the scale of the eviction, Another team of agents are joining Paul and Steve on the case. Wonder how many caravans are going to be here. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor. Ah, here we are. I said, have we ever seen them team up at all in four seasons? I don't think we have. This is a rare occasion. The job needs careful planning before the agents go to the site. Can we do this briefing so we can get down there? So they meet in a car park half a mile away. What we'd prefer to do is just to go in quietly, do a walkabout as we always do. If it all goes wrong, just pull back and we'll wait for reinforcements. Mm. But then a van pulls up. All right, thank you. What's going on? The possibilities are that we're coming to move you down the road. If, no. you, if you want the true answer, yeah. You're going to try and move us? Yeah. Oh. Well, normal. There's a high court issue, is it? It is, yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, they got ears everywhere. How he just pull up randomly? See, this is stuff that be making me think like shows are scripted. Like, how? How are we just thrusted into the immediate negativity? I'm not complaining about it, but how? It started. With the community now aware of the eviction, the agents must get to the site as quickly as possible. That would be it. And the entrance is there on the left, I think, yeah. Where's the police? Not here yet. Everybody could have rallied round together and caused us a huge problem. The more people there are around you, the greater risk of somebody becoming um, aggressive. The travellers are camped illegally on a former government vehicle testing site. 
what we'll do is just we'll wait just go in and have a chat with him first and see how we get on from there. Literally, wherever they lay their ass home. Enter the site. The van they encountered earlier pulls off. Morning, sir. What we would like you to do is to get everybody together and move along. We have a high call grip, which right. we've got we don't go off the options. They're, they're sending a wrecker truck down and they'll drag you off yeah. within they're the hour. Right There's a lot of kids here. You can't take a lot of you. No, 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 no. We want to do this nicely and together. Do you want us to walk around and knock on the doors, or you? Just... Well, look, there's dogs down there. You should get bitten. I'm only, I'm only here to tell you right from wrong. All right. <laughs> a few new babies here. What? I'm only here to tell you right from wrong. I get the traveler's mentality, man. Like, wherever they can find a piece of land, that's where they're going to camp out. But, like, when this, like, they got to know when this type of stuff happens. Like, why even make a scene? You're going to go regardless. Like, you're going to go. <laughs> okay. okay. Can you walk around? All right. Listen, what's your name? First name. Mr. Murphy. Okay. Dogs in there, they will bite us and it won't be Mr. Murphy, we'll wait. <clears throat> As a precaution, Steve calls the police to check they're nearby. Right, I thought that was already if they there. Drive by, they can drive by and we'll have a chat with them and then can go from there. Should the things take a turn for the worst, we'll call them straight away. Even though Mr. Murphy has agreed to tell his fellow travellers they must leave. Paul is duty bound to make sure the whole community is aware of the High Court writ. Sorry to get you out of bed. It's a High Court eviction notice. Yeah, so we'll leave by when? Midday. Or Monday, yeah? No, today. OK, we'll be out of here, thank you. All right, OK. So far, the travellers seem to be cooperating. OK. We'd like everybody to be gone by 12. See, I knew they had, like, they knew. But then... The situation suddenly changes. Get out of here. Watch out, guys. <laughs> Paul. Just a minute, I'll have an opportunity to get a good piece of kit out. I ain't gonna lie, when you see a kid walk like this, just a minute, I'll have an opportunity. He normally bad as hell. He normally bad. Opportunity to get a good piece of kit out. It's always a youngster who starts making a fuss. Yeah. Trying to make a name for himself. Watch out, guys. If they did their part and kept it clean. Well, Steve. Good. Oh, Terrible man. aim, too. People kept shouting and having a pop. You just have to be aware of everybody around you. And where are the adults? Your colleague can keep an eye on you and you can keep your eye on them. You know where you are and how safe you are. Look out for them throwing things on the way past. Is that for the <laughs> what was it? Glass bottle. Watch out, guys. As the situation becomes more and more violent... That was a brick. ..the agents will have to think on their feet to keep this unpredictable eviction. Where are the police track. at? Well, I haven't seen the police show up in 12 seconds before for something less. As soon as they hear this, they ah, let's take our time. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner were in Birmingham to evict a group of travelers who were camped illegally on a former vehicle testing site. What we would like you to do is to get everybody together and move along. Together with agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor, they had 28 caravans to move. It all seemed to be going well. We'd like everybody to be gone by 12. But then the mood changed. Watch out, guys. And the situation turned violent. What was it? Negative. He threw a script. He wrote through a script of promethazine at him. Like, what is that? Now, with the agents still under attack from the children, Steve appeals to the man they spoke to earlier. Mr. Murphy, could you do me a big favour? 
ask the boys not to do this. Here, Johnny! Because, you know, it's, it's not good. We're trying to do this, you know, as nice as possible. Thank you. As the situation is volatile, the police arrive. Hello, sir. They said one cop? One solo cop? Paul asked them to come onto the site as a precaution. The kids are starting to get arsy now and throwing yeah. stones. The last, stones. Yeah. Oh, if you pull in the yard, it would be helpful. We do at all, all costs, and I can't stress this enough, at all costs, we avoid physical uh, confrontation. If the police are there, they do appear to have a calming effect and we'll carry on with eviction. With the police on site, the atmosphere calms down and some of the caravans begin to leave. Is everybody OK? Yeah, 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 everything's fine. All right, if there's any trouble, will you come and stand by me? Of course, we'll probably let that happen. <laughs> they are going peacefully, except for the kids. It's always the kids. I told you, though, there's always some nervousness when you're coming over here like this to the travellers piece of plot of land where they've decided to call their own. Everybody nervous. Isn't it? Even the police. Are all the other vans going to go, do you know? Yeah, but there's not enough coal bars. So no, 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 that's OK. That's OK. I just didn't know, didn't know if there was going to be any left. That was all. No, no, there's no one, but there's, there's not enough coal bars. OK. We're just going to have to go and come back. OK, brilliant. Thank you. The travellers are towing their caravans to another site nearby. If it's another illegal site, then we've got another issue, haven't we? Means we'll have to go and see them again in three weeks' time when we get another possession order. Yeah, well, not now, though, but three weeks. But tensions are still running high. Stop, stop. Oh, leaving all them poor people homeless, does it? Huh? Leaving all them poor people homeless? No, you're not homeless. You're one with the land, aren't you? You already in a caravan, like you, that's, okay. Maybe I don't understand. See you later, guys. Oh, for God's sake, leave all the poor old people alone around the road. Oh, you ain't got You're high jackass. Yes, many boomer. Finally, the last of the travelers leave. So I've quit look now. With everyone gone, Stuart and Vic take a look around the site. Oh, God, that's vile. And they're in for a shock. This it looks terrible. Urine. Freaking hell. Wow. It stinks. All the windows have been smashed. But this is the problem. This is what they leave behind. One big mess. See, it'd be one thing if they was, like, in there, cleanly... I'm not saying all, all, all traveller groups are the same but like if you was just like cleanlier and found a real place for trash and didn't just dump your pee into it like it'll be the same outcome but like still it's worse down here that's where they've been dumping all the rubbish from like tarmacking and trees and you know all the general rubbish from work look at the devastation that they leave behind it's going to cost thousands and thousands and thousands to put this right. The eviction is complete. There's been a bit of uproar, which there always is, because people aren't happy about being moved. They want to live here for the rest of their lives. It's the same you? thing, isn't it? Yeah. You're asking people to leave what they consider their home. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. With the site cleared, the two teams... See, I didn't even think about it like that. I'm thinking, like, the caravan is the home. Like where I feel like wherever you pull up, like can't aren't there, aren't there campsites? Like what's going on? Like in America, they got like parks where you can pull up for the night. I don't know. But see, they don't want to move continuously. They want to stay somewhere, right? Teams can go their separate ways. See you later, guys. Take, care, Take it easy. Take care, At the start of last year, 
small businesses accounted for over 99% of all private sector enterprises in the UK. But after five years, the majority of small and medium-sized companies are no longer in business. Things cutting down. Oh, so the problem was uh, on the computer, I had too many programs running at once. Like on the internet, like too many tab bars open. I only had five open, but whatever. Central London. High Court Enforcement Agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are on their way to Hatton Garden, a district famous for its jewellery shops. This is the Diamond Court. I mean, you can see the diamonds around there. We're going to a company called Bedazzle in Greville Street. Yeah. You see one in November. Yeah. I already know the pending excuse. We, that company doesn't trade here anymore, and then they're going to have to do some investigating work, and they're going to find out they do. Watch. Guaranteed. The company, Bedazzle, owes over £6,000 to a customer who claims she was sold faulty jewellery. But it looks like the business is no longer trading. Dell asks her neighbouring jewellers for any information about the company. Hello, sir. I wonder if you can help me. Um, the other shop next door to you, yeah. was it open at all today? Has it been open? Nice closed, like... Next shop is closing for almost three months. It's been closed three months? Yeah. More than three months. Really? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. An enforcement I mean, that was kind has of already right. been sent to another address for the company. Brian calls to confirm the details. Hello, I wonder if you can help me. I'm trying to locate your store. Can you tell me where it is, please? Yes, of course. It's number 18, Hatton Garden. We're in the Wonder Gallery. More or less in the centre of Hatton Garden. Thank you very much. No Bye. Okay, there's Hatton Garden. This unsuspecting employee, this about to be your worst. <laughs> you shouldn't even ask. He gonna, you gonna pull up, they gonna recognize his voice. This is you was on the phone, wasn't you? I gave you all the info. Mm -hmm. Was it 1-8? Yeah. The agents are in luck. The new premises are just around the corner. Here you go, the one the gallery. Oh, well, it's not too bad then. Bedazzle shares the mall with several other jewellers. Now the agents must find company director Charles Abrahams. Looking for the manager. This doesn't seem very... Sharing this one space with all of these jewellery people? Like, how is this beneficial to any one seller? I would just undercut everybody and have better products. Like, what is... Manager. Hello. How are you? My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm a high court enforcement agent. Were you located around the corner before? Yeah, of course I can. Absolutely. This will be interesting. My name's Brian O'Shaughnessy. I'm here on behalf of the high court. We've got a high court writ for one of your ex-customers or customer. OK, she's taken a high court writ against you, sir. Well, bedazzle. And we're here to... ...is the trading name of my company. She misfired. I told you. I told you. Here we go. Here's the script. That be as it may, sir. This is good enough for me because Bad Bedazzle is a trading name of your company. So this is what we're going to be using. OK? Now, we're here that's, to... That's Hear me out. Correct. Hear me out. Um, you can have your say in a moment. Now, I'm here to collect £6,410.82. Right, that's what the High Court writ says. Well, OK? What, what are you expecting and what do you need from me today? Well, what I'm looking for you today is to pay this amount, sir. It's gone to the High Court. The company um, doesn't have the well, so, to do that. Well, what? Do you really want... If that's the case, sir... Well, right, I, I, well, to save any headache, I'll let me tell you but, but that the... I'm going to give you an opportunity. I'm not being intimidated. I just want to get. I'm done. I'm just trying to respond, and you're not even giving me the opportunity. You've asked me a question. Do you want me to answer? There we go. The victim as I. The victim. The victim mentality. When he's already sold somebody fake jewelry, and they're the real victims. Okay, go ahead. You've asked me what will happen if you can't arrange the funds. Yes. What will happen, sir? The amount then. That that will be requested 
it'd be £7,411.62 pence, and we'd remove goods to cover that amount. Okay, well, you can't, because this is a different company. Well, then we would say the, the, then the problem you've got here. Well, this is a different company that doesn't even relate to that. It was formed on the 18th of June. Okay, well, the, well, the, the riches were dazzled. So, we, so as yeah, far as we, well, we'll, we'll happily continue. We'll, 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 we'll continue. We'll, 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 the rich may say bedazzled, mm -hmm. bedazzled diamonds. Limited. Okay, but well, I'm sure your customers aren't aware of that when they purchase something from you. Mr. Abrahams claims that the business operating from his new practice. That's scummy. I'm not gonna lie, that is scummy, the little slick name thing. This is a, this is a scammer. We got a scammer. Let's get everything. Premises is a new company, Bedazzle Diamonds Limited, and that this new company is not liable for the debt. Can't take any I'll tell you what, sir. It really is up to you, right? We do not get involved in any disputes. Okay, if you don't want to pay this amount, fine. We will take goods to recover the higher amount, and you can have your day in court with your solicitor. Will you listen to me? Yes, will, you you listen to me? Yes, will you listen to me? Will you listen to me, please? Yes. All right. We know our job, right? I don't tell you how to do yours. I don't know about diamonds. I really don't. Right. This is my job. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what we will do. Do I have the right to call my sister? You can call okay. whoever you like to. Absolutely. While Mr. Abrahams calls his solicitor. Brian about to collect inventory on him. Brian takes a look around the premises. If any of the valuable stock on site belongs to the company trading as Bedazzle, they could be taken away to offset the debt. When dealing with the jewellers, it's, um, it's happy days. They don't want their jewellery going. If we chose to take control of any goods or assets, we could fit them in our pocket. It's that simple. I've got bailiffs in my shop, in the trap saying that um, unless I pay them the money, they won't take any goods or from my shop. Can I pass him over to you? So, yeah, I'll see. So it's not going to matter. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. The solicitor reiterates Mr. Abraham's claim that Bedazzle Diamonds Limited is a new company formed after the court action began and therefore not liable for the debt. So you, you shouldn't even put Bedazzled in it. Like, why would you even, you know what I'm saying? You wanted your old customers to have that relatable name to know that it's you still. That was the slick part of it all. You're saying that there wasn't a company at all called Bedazzle in 2012. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. OK. All right. That's what you're saying. All right. We have a high court writ here. OK. Um, the debtor is Bedazzle. That's what we have on the paperwork. Bedazzle. Yeah. Just bedazzle. Dell is confident that the agents have the right to continue. Just, just, look, look I'm not going to have this argument with you. You've asked me a question, I'm answering it. All right? The name of the debtor on my paperwork is Bedazzle. OK? He's confirmed that they've moved from the address at Greville Street to here. Based on that today, I will be proceeding with instructions on the High Court writ. If he doesn't want to pay this amount, that's his right not to. But he won't stop. Uh, so the only thing that got, that got him on is when he said, yeah, I moved from across the street to here on the phone call. See, if you would have just been quiet. See, he was too thirsty for that sale on the phone. Got me removing goods to that's cover the debt. That's a dub, the Thank you very much. She seems to think there wasn't a company called Bedazzle prior to the incorporation of this one in 2015. Well, I beg to differ because around the corner there's a shop that says Bedazzle on it. Mr. Abrahams decides to tell the agents more about the debt. It, it's, it's so unfair. It is so unfair. This, this lady, she was absolutely your worst nightmare, nightmare scenario customer. You bent over backwards for what was it about? What was it for? That's how I be when I'm here listening to somebody and I know if I've already made up in my mind what's going on. I just be sitting there, mmm. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> Wedding band and she was upset that the diamonds repeatedly fell out. 
We did numerous times. We tried to prepare this. I'm a good, honest guy. Absolutely. And we at at at, the, at some point we just said enough is enough. We can't deal with this. Anymore. Can't keep doing it. So then she put in the county court judgment against us. We didn't get a chance to respond and put a cover there in court. She got to keep all the bands, and I have to pay all this money on top of that. For something that which I, is, I, I, which is, which is, that, which is why yes. you should have your day in court, sir, because so we, we... are you telling me now that I will have an opportunity to... Yes, to yes, yes, yes. I often find myself advising debtors about getting the case set aside once you make them aware. That's crazy, because he just had a whole conversation with his lawyer. Your lawyer ain't let you know that? That the money doesn't go directly to the claimant and they got 14 days. You've sweetened that pill a little bit, enough for them to pay it, so they can get their solicitor onto the case and get the day in court. Where do I write the money? One moment, I'll get it off you now. Knowing he can appeal, Mr. Abrahams decides to pay the £6,400. Thank you very much. Charles, I know it's been difficult for you, but we appreciate your hospitality, yeah? No worries. All right, Charles, good luck. At the end of the day, Charles is a diamond dealer. He got the money. Just go deal with it how you need to deal with it. Your day's result. It's done. Paid. But I think it's just been a thorn in his side. You know, it's just been a pain in the arse for him. He's now got the choice to set it aside, go to court, he's got 14 days to do so. Um, but I've got a feeling he's not going to do that. He's probably going to weigh up how much more it's going to cost him, and he runs the risk that he could lose. It's unfortunate. Yeah, just be done. Right, so... He's bought it on himself. He should have dealt with it. Brian and Dell have got the debt paid. But on Paul and Steve's next case, they find themselves... The number of households renting in the private sector... My bad, I said no, what are they doing? Why are they trying to give us a preview? We don't want to just get to it. ...is set to rise by 1.1 million by 2021. But this increase in the rental market has been met with a surge in evictions, reaching a record high last year. High Court enforcement agents Paul Bowhill and Steve Pinner are in Sunbury on Thames, Surrey, to carry out another eviction. The area is a really, really nice area. The river's on the right here. It is. Yeah. That big wet thing there, see it? The landlord claims the tenant, Paul Jones, owes over £4,000 in unpaid rent. It's just here. Are they all coming to collect it, the or y'all want them out? The a shop owned by the landlord, Palmer Argila. The landlord claims he's been trying to get Mr Jones out for months, but the agents aren't here to collect the arrears. It's time to get out. Their job is to get the tenant out today. But this eviction isn't going to be straightforward. We finna get negative? Somebody coming to the door at last. Good afternoon. Paul? Hello Paul? No, I'm not. I'm Aaron. Is Paul about? Uh, no, not the minute, no. OK. This is for Paul. Can you tell him we're here to repossess the property? Sorry? He's can not you here at the minute. Well, can Definitely you him tell him? If you I, would. I don't have any credit or anything. Well, he needs to know that we're actually here to repossess the property. OK. So, do you have a number and I'll call him? Is he local? Um, I don't know where he is, to be honest. Do you live here as well? Uh, partly, yeah. Sort of rent the room. That's going to end as well. Yeah, I'll get it down. All right. Please ask him, Mrs. Sure. You got Twitter? Well, get her to call him. It appears that Paul Jones isn't the only person living at the flat. I'm in a Wednesday. Would you like to go and get dressed then? Because you need to put your clothes on. So play on words. <laughs> First of all, a onesie is dressed. Like, what is the problem? 
I'm wearing a onesie because it's one o'clock. <laughs> sure it's not a quarter of a onesie? Yeah. It wasn't funny. It's funny that they think that it's funny, but it's not funny. Can I come in now and have a chat with you? But as soon as they go inside, Paul and Steve are in for a surprise. Uh, I'm Paul Jones. Oh, Hello. my landlord's been lying. I'm sorry, but he's gone no, to the High Court. No, my landlord has been lying. Where's my letter from the High Court? That gentleman there's got it. My rent's been paid. OK. Mr Jones claims that he took out the... T she still got on this onesie? ...tenancy for the three-bedroom flat 12 months ago. He let out a room to his friend, Aaron, but fell behind with the rent after giving up work due to ill health. I'm on sickness benefit. OK, OK, OK. I've just got out of hospital, I have two heart attacks. OK, I've come out of ACU, I've got all the letters here. Did you go to the county court? Did I? Yeah. No, because I was in a hospital. It soon becomes clear that there's a long-running... You look rather young to be in the hospital for two heart attacks. ...dispute between the tenant and the landlord, Palmer. I have the uh, lease for the whole property. OK. Three bedroom. He has sublet a double room to a Polish couple who have applied their own lock and have their own tenancy with Palmer. Mr Jones claims that because his sickness benefits didn't cover the full rent, the landlord sublet the flat six months ago to make up the shortfall. He says... Well, hey. ..the rent is now shared between him and the new subtenants. Hey. They paid £500 a month directly to him since May, yeah. so there are no arrears. But the writ doesn't say anything about a separate tenancy agreement. Yeah, that's a, that's a crooked landlord right there. If that's true what he's saying, that's a scumbag one. That's a slumlord. He want all the money. Agreement. Have you got a contact number for the Polish people? No, because he did it. The landlord did it separately. It's clear that there's more to this case than the agents expected. Paul calls the office for more information. Telephone. Yeah, I've spoken to the uh, clients and uh, they're, they're not aware of any subtenants, uh, tenancies, anything going on. And they'd like, uh, they wish everybody to remove from the property that might be there. Okay, yeah. So, Thanks for that. Right. Cheers. Bye. There's an interesting quirk on this is the landlord is not aware of the tenants upstairs. What? Not he's aware of the tenants the upstairs. Mm. He's got and, the evic and the eviction order is for the whole property, oh, including them. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm only reporting what the officer said. Yeah, he's got. But he, he has got a person. She had the ones you. No, thingy with these Polish people because we said about getting them out, and he was like, no. Despite the dispute with the landlord, Mr Jones and his flatmates must leave today. What is going to happen is that we will give you an hour to get your personal effects together. To go where? To go to the council. To go to the council? Yes. And how am I going to get there? I don't know. I'm agoraphobic. Do you want all my doctor's notes? All I, I know... even leave the property? All I know is that I have to have this property empty. He's lying. No. I have no you involvement with that. Me 24 hours. We can't. We can't. What we do, you don't have to take everything. You just need is enough stuff. But I've got nowhere to go. You go straight to the council. I've got no family. No, my family are dead. I've got no. Fr you have to go straight to the council. Your name is on here. He is a male. I I don't know if he's going to be able to get anything from the council from from what y'all be telling me in the comments and from what I be seeing. He ain't got no kids, he ain't... But he is at risk because of the heart and the conditions. There may be that. I don't know where I'm going to go, Sal. The eviction is going nowhere. But then the landlord arrives and Paul heads downstairs to hear his side of the story. There's a background to this, obviously. How okay. long have they been here? Uh, one, uh, one year. They have they moved in. The They're behind with the rent. Then I give him rent on time, they never did. Um, just he said he's been in hospital, 
Mr. Cork case had a heart attack. He's been lying a lot of time. Every time I go there, and he used to just tell me stories that oh, I've got heart condition, you don't shout at me, don't do this. I said, all I want is my rent. All right. It's just that if you're with us now, okay. we can get the lock changed, which is one fine, thing. Yeah. We can clarify the situation and get them moving a little bit faster. That's okay. Thank That's you. fine. Thank you very much. Are you ready to go? Yeah, but what's he said? He just said, well, that's... The landlord's here. Where? Here, outside. Sorry. Be nice. Why would y'all incite this type of negativity? Y'all ain't need to tell him he was outside. I ain't gonna lie, this is a nice crew, too. They got it set up real nice. Palmer, why have you lied and you said that they've not paid any money? Well, were like, you're not paying, they're not paying your people, no? You're not paying anything. So oh, I'm pay. paying. It's your people, uh, so why are you telling me? It's not my people. They're your people. Let's have a look at your tenancy agreement with them then. What tenancy? The tenancy agreement you gave to them. What? I haven't given nobody. You haven't? The landlord denies that he... The landlord lying. I can see it, the landlord lying. There's a lot of lying going on somewhere in here. ...has a separate agreement with the Polish couple and claims that Mr Jones is still responsible for paying the full rent. you got the only tenancy agreement. Yeah. You haven't given them the tenancy agreement at all. That's your people. No, 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 it's not my people. Yeah. Don't lie. Time is running out for Mr Jones. But then, one of the Polish flatmates Mr. Po returns. Is the Polish people? Camille, what? He's saying you've not paid him nothing because he's got you've got no tenancy agreement. Don't worry about me. No, but what I'm saying is he's lying though. And the not care about Please. What what please? What what you what you want? Just the tenancy that he gave to you. No, why not? You Because they in cahoots. He is good. Mr. Polish man is good. The landlord and the Polish man already talked. He said, yeah, they're going to come in there, but don't even worry about it. Don't say nothing. Just go to your room and hush up. Paid him money there that he is denying you paid. Whatever, man. That's not going to help you anyway. Please, Camille. I'm begging you. Just do what you need to do. Don't speak to me. The more we talk to the and we find out their background and this, and how the stories evolve. This is, you get, he getting backdoored in his own crib. It's a crooked landlord, for sure. This is one of the cases where the landlord bogus. And then you can understand their situation. And you do. You do feel sorry for some of them. Please. Palmer. You've got a family. Please, I thank you. How can you not even look at me? The tenants have had nearly... Yeah, it's hard to look at somebody in the face when you lie. ...an hour extra to pack up and leave. But Mr. Jones is still reluctant to go. You gave him an agreement. You gave him an agreement. You know you did. I'm sorry, Paul. We need to be gone. Yeah, well, I, I'm not being funny. I want that tenancy agreement. I hope your kids, yeah, get treated like this. Whatever the rights and wrongs of the case, Paul and Steve are duty-bound to enforce the writ, and all the tenants must leave. OK. Paul. Are the Polish people leaving too? That was the Polish man? We gotta go now. You have to stand in the rain. I'm trying to find a dry bit. There's a dry bit here. Finally, Mr. Jones and his dog leave. Take care. I really mean that. You got my number. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. Yeah. He is now homeless. I actually don't know what to do. I'm actually scared because I've got nowhere to go. I've got no family. Mum and dad, sister are dead. Got no one, nowhere to go. My bad, I was muted. I said, dang, that boy Legacy, his whole prelude is crazy. Mom, dad, sis, you ain't... So, that's it. On the streets. 
somebody was lying there, either the landlord wasn't giving us the whole story or the tenant was lying. We can only take things on face value, can't we? Yeah. Nearly 60% of businesses in the UK have some sort of debt, and the amount owed is on the rise. In the last five years, business debt has risen by 25%, and it's forcing many companies to close their doors altogether. <laughs> 6 p.m. High Court enforcement agents Brian O'Shaughnessy and Delroy Anglin are in West Sussex. What have we got now, Del? We're back to see Mr Stuart Marler. They have a High Court writ to recover a debt of more than £3,000, owed by a small website company, Retriever Web Solutions, to one of their customers. What have we got here? Where is it? What numbers are we at? I can't see this. One, two, seven. The company is owned by Stuart Marler. Brian and Dell have visited his house on three previous occasions, but he's never been in. Should we go and give him a nice little visit again? I think that would be very nice, as he's not expecting us. Knock, knock, your date is here. Mr Marler has recently contacted the office, claiming he has no means to pay. He's fogged us off a bit, hasn't he? Well, as usual, he doesn't want to pay his debts. No. This time, Brian and Dell need to serve him the writ face to face and resolve the case once and for all. Yeah, there you go, lights on. Lovely. Waiting for me. Right. Man, it's, it's nine minutes left. I'll be looking at the time to see how much negativity you can fit left into a short period of time, if there's enough time for the negativity. If this is the last case, then there's more than enough time for this to turn negative. Hi, Mr. Marla. Oh. How you doing? Hi. Mr. Anglin, okay. High Court Enforcement. We've got a High Court writ. Mm -hmm. We need to see your circumstances mm -hmm. so I can put this to bed and see what we're mm -hmm. doing with it. Okay. Right, so what do you want? I need to come in and see your circumstances. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. What is this about? <laughs> I, I, I know um, you. Basically, it's a website that we agreed to build for the guy. They never gave us any information. And then all of a sudden, he just said, you know, you're not doing it for what, how we want it. The company was in trouble. We couldn't afford anything. So we rented out the house and went to uh, basically live in Spain. So we literally just moved back Sunday night. Okay. So the company now is being closed down. Mr. Marler thought the debt would disappear when the company folded, but Dell has some bad news. If it was just the company, you might have had an argument, but um, you can see that your name's on there along with the company. So because you've named on it, we have to have a look at what assets you have. OK. we basically got nothing, really. So, no. Um, Do you have vehicles or anything? No. If people are in debt, it's not a positive thing for people, but it's how people choose to deal with debt. And, you know, you've got to plough through it. Don't bury your head. Uh -huh. this, looks, this looks like an upstanding man. It's not going to be any type of negativity here. Yes. Mr. Marler claims he has no assets of value, but Dell needs proof. This is our main bedroom. We got no wardrobes or anything. <laughs> um, literally just come back with what we got. All right. What are you doing for money at the moment? Um, well, the retreat web solutions shut down. Yeah. We're going to start up again. Same things. That's what we know. Yeah. Um, Starting up again, aren't you? We basically couldn't afford to go bankrupt. There appears to be nothing worth seizing in the house. Then, Dell spots something in the bedroom. How old's the computer? Uh, about nine months. OK. That's his whole job. OK. No computer, it's over. That's about a four-year-old 
laptop. The computers are the only items of any value. But without them, Stuart may struggle to make a success of his new IT business. How do you work with web design? What would you use to do it? Um, we don't, well, we do web design by using templates. So we get, we buy in a template for 40, 50 quid. Um, so how do you do that? What do you use to do all that stuff? Just a computer. It's upstairs, a computer. Yeah. It's about nine months old. Stuart is facing a crisis. If he can't make a payment today, he could lose what few assets he has. And the clock is ticking. It was eight minutes left, and they fit a commercial break in here? And the TV, that would have been a commercial break. Brian and Del Anglin were in West Sussex to collect a debt. No, we're not doing Good that. See. They're trying to drag it out, going to repeat what happened. We don't need an update. We just synced it. Now Stuart must try and raise some funds, or he stands to lose his computer equipment and his chance to rebuild his company. Stuart's wife arrives. Hello. 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 So... You are? Well? Yes. OK. Let me explain what your position is. Unless we come to some arrangement in relation to the outstanding debt here, we will be calling a van to remove goods of value. I don't want to disrupt your business that you're bringing up, but I will take the computer and all computers in the house. I don't want to do that. But you need to understand that I will. We haven't got nearly £4,000. <laughs> Brian in the back like this is killing me. Brian, why is your arms... Why, why do you need stability right here? Get off that wall. Available. If you're getting your business up and running again, does it suit you for me to take your computer and remove your goods and we'll be here all night? But that's what I'll do. Racking up the pressure at certain points when enforcing a high court writ is imperative. It's to show your intention and it's to make debtors understand the severity of what's in front of them. We don't take any pleasure in upsetting anybody, but they need to work with us. We, uh, and it, it, this, you know, can this we come up to an agreement of some type? No way in our family's got any money. I mean, if we can come to an agreement to to pay something back each month or something like that, we just we haven't got. Well, in order for you know. right, okay, in order for me to even think about that, I would need a significant at least deposit. Have. Or a significant payment. What would you consider a significant payment? It's got to be at least half. Can you find half of it? Wait, no, we haven't got the money. Okay, let's. I'll call the. I'll call the vehicle then. Right, let me do that. Nah, Brian, they really don't got. I really think they don't got it. Like, sure, yes, they living in a pretty big house. I ain't even gonna lie, but or is this big? I can't even tell. It might be thin, but tall. Pause. Let me just press play. So in so doing, if we do decide to remove, the fee's going to go up because we've got to pay for the removal van, so the, the new balance will jump up by You're a significant amount. You're going to pay £2,000 now this second. You're going to start taking our stuff now. Yeah. Oh, but it's better than finding £4,000, isn't it? Yeah, but it might as well be £4,000. You must have somebody that can help you. We can't. We haven't. We haven't. Our family's... Broke. We haven't got money in our family. If the couple can't come up with an offer soon, they stand to lose what little they have. That boy stressed out on that top step. He's going through it. Anything I can try and ask is. Do you think Barrett could then just come? All we could do is ask him. We're happy to wait. Like you don't hurt that. Yeah. He run. He's like 79, 80. This is entirely up to you who, who you are. So yeah. But he won't be able to pay the money now. Why? Because he wouldn't have internet banking or phone banking or anything like that. Debit card? Um, you don't know who you speak to. It just costs one bridge at a time. While Stuart speaks to his uncle Barry, Dell wants to find out more from his wife about the couple's move to Spain. Why did you come back? Was he not working out there, the business? Um, yeah, we were homesick. Oh. We thought we were trying to, we moved out there because we needed to get things back on track. Mm -hmm. And we felt that now we were 
trying to get things back on track. It would enable us to move back. They buried their head in the sand for such a long time that they think that the problems are going to disappear. And when someone... That ain't how that type of debt work. Uh. At all. Like me, arrives, they're actually made to face the issues that they've been avoiding for months or years. And in a funny sort of way, it brings them a little bit of relief because they, they can unburden it all. Minutes later, Stuart has some news. Yeah, money. Well done. Are we talking the full amount, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. At least this will be off your bag, so you don't need to cry anymore. Your husband's come good. The gentleman's coming around here now to make payment, uh, and then we'll be on our way. He's a 79-year-old man, so we need to be conscious of him and if there's any issues with him, but he's been really nice by the sounds of it, and he wants to help him. I ain't gonna lie, 79. You got like, you got, you know what I'm saying? You getting whatever money you getting is for you. Go oh, yeah, Unc. Well, so, uh, times of need, you know who your friends are? You know who your real family is. 20 minutes later, Stuart's Uncle Barry arrives. How you doing? Come What's in. going on? Thank you for your help, sir. Come on, Unc, just pay it. You can't run away from a debt, and it eventually catches up with you. Have you got your card, please, sir? Thank you. There's many, many things that, that create people's debt or situation. I'm not gonna lie, man. I would love to get to a point in my life where I could just flip my card out and be like, here you go. Here's $4,000 immediately. <laughs> no way. Patience. But we're not there to judge. We're there to resolve it in the right way. There you go. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Stuart. Much. Thank you for your help. All right. Every time Brian get paid, he get real, real nice. Like, he be real uh, over-the-top nice. I don't blame you, Brian. With the debt paid in full, Stuart's new business is safe. Brian done got 10 bands this episode. The court and the personal liability to the side, the judge against the travelers left the site, they have not returned. Travelers did not make any challenge, we knew it. Just be done. Alright, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's follow me on Twitch, man.